I've already gotten a couple of good videos out of this Sony CD player clock radio thing that I'm working on right now. I'll put in links for them. One of them is about this Kitamori Kitten Sexy Transformer, and the other one is about some unusual voltage regulators that I found on here, a 7804 and 7807 voltage regulators. Very unusual device. Anyway, since I've already got, got it torn down, I figured I would do a teardown video. And also some complaints about the quality of the circuit board. I'll start with that. When I was messing around with these voltage regulators here, um, you know, I bent, bent one back so I could look at the part number better. But then, as it turns out, what I ended up doing was lifting up the copper pads on the uh, underside of the board. Here, this is the one I bent back and I've already fixed it. I had to scrape off some of the solder mask here on the copper traces and put some extra blobs of solder just to hold it steady because this thing was wobbling back and forth. The solder joints themselves were okay, but the, the copper traces had just been completely ripped up off of the the board and I hadn't hadn't really bent it back that far it was just like one little push and then the the pads just came came right off so I got that fixed oh and there was another one here too there it is this transistor I think I bent that a little bit and uh, it wasn't as bad but I still put some extra solder on there just to hold it in place now, I'm no expert in circuit board layout, but I found something very interesting here, and that is this. Look at that. All these individual traces, they all come back to this point. This is, of course, one of the, the main power capacitors here. You see all these. I don't know why they would do this, why they would just be individual traces like this instead of one big ground plane right here. And I think there was another one somewhere on the board. Oh yeah, there it is. This one right here. What is that? That's just a jumper wire going across. And all these traces here, they maintain themselves separate until they go their, their own separate ways to different jumpers or components on the other side of the board. Not really sure why they did that, but it's very interesting. I don't know if it has a fancy name, but I like to call it octopus traces. Now, a quick look at the mains input right here. That's uh, the power cord goes, where does that go? Oh yeah, it goes right here on that one. And then we go through the, uh, the common mode choke and then straight into this, the little little dinky transformer here, that's for standby power. Um, but when the device gets turned on, there's a relay right here on the other side. So that relay gets switched on and then transfers power through the fuse here and then to the main transformer, which is this one right here, Kitamura Kitten. Then on the other side of that, we go to the funky voltage regulators, and of course to the rest of the board. This spot right here was formerly occupied by the antenna input stage. And it's really unusual. I've never seen, you know, it's just ordinary AM FM antenna, but it's very, looks very sophisticated. You've got the little spring contacts here for the AM loop antenna, and rather than a a wire dangling out the back or some other spring contact or maybe a screw contact to hook up your own wires. This one actually has a 75 ohm coax connector. I'm really, really surprised. I've never seen that kind of fancy stuff in a simple FM radio antenna. But there's all the nice inductors on the inside splayed apart to uh, precision tune them to the right value. And of course, this has covers on it. I took the covers off already. There's the main audio amplifier. 
went for a single chip solution with this thing and just screwed that onto the heat sink. And every time I handle this thing, I get this, this uh, heat sink compound, the white grease all over my fingers. It's a mess. One thing I've learned over the years when putting screws back into their holes is that you don't want to make any new threads in between the threads that are already inside the hole. So whenever I put something back together, I always go counterclockwise first until I hear or feel that the screw goes down like that. Then I know that the threads are in place and I can very easily screw it in without too much trouble. Here's the main processing board. The, uh, the processor itself is on the underside of the board. It also has this riser board right here, which takes care of the ethernet or network connection. So this thing apparently has a function where you can hook it up to your computer or to the, your home network and stream music straight into it. One other really cool feature that I found is that on the silk screen you can see every connection for every cable is clearly labeled with what it is. So this thing is very very hackable even on the riser board if you can see down there. Let me shine a flashlight down there so you can see even on the riser board with the network connection everything is clearly labeled. So it should be quite easy to hack this thing to do something that it was never intended to do. And speaking of hacking, when I first tried to find out what was wrong with this, I wanted to see if I could get the CD player working while the lid was open. And I figured they would have some sophisticated thing going on. I tried pushing, there's this thing right here, this little disc that goes down and there's a cylinder a rod, a plastic rod in the middle, and of course that gets pushed down by this thing, so I figured so I figured that there might be a switch down there that senses it, and the reason they put this rod in the middle is so you can't push it down with your finger. You know, that would be some reasonable amount of, of uh, safety precaution, so you can't play the CD or you can't look at the laser with the lid open. But I pushed this down, nothing happened. So I figured, oh, maybe they've they've gone with the um, with the optocoupler method, and they might have something internal, an optocoupler that gets uh, gets the beam blocked by a piece of plastic when the lid goes down. So I stuck a piece of paper down there, but still, that didn't do anything. Finally, I pushed the little clicky button here, the clicky hook that latches on to the lid when it gets closed and sure enough that fooled the thing into thinking that the lid was closed because right here that click just has a little switch right there and a couple wires that go up to the the main processor board it's really really easy to fool this thing that the lid was closed to so easy that I didn't even think it would be that easy. It's ridiculous. And I wanted to have a close look at the 3.3 volt regulator on the processor board and look at that. Toshiba 78033. Yet another one of those voltage regulators that I never knew existed until I took this thing apart. And here's the underside of the board. Now I, I ain't no Dave Jones so I'm not going to go into much detail here but here's both sides of the, the Ethernet board. There's a uh, trans transformer, isolation transformer module for the Ethernet jack connection and just a bunch of surface mount stuff here. So there's the main processor. It's the NEC brand, date code of 2005 and made in Japan. Oh doc, all the best stuff is made in Japan. Now I can comment on the quality of these circuit boards and again just like the power supply board over there it's it's um, fiberglass really cheap construction 
these same thing, same fiberglass. And even just, just looking at this, I would say I was taking apart a, a VCR from the early 90s. I mean, that's, that's the kind of feel that this thing has. It's got all the surface mount components, all those resistors and caps. They've got tiny little red bead of epoxy holding them on for the wave solder machine. And just this thing mounted on a 45 degree angle like that. And I've taken apart lots of old VCRs that had the, the main processor chip mounted exactly like that on the same quality board too. Now here's a nice attention to detail. This stamped steel chassis has very sharp edges on it. So if you wanna stick a wire through a hole in the chassis, you gotta make sure that it's the hole is rounded out like it is here. They actually put some some special tool in here to to splay out the edges of the of the hole and make a nice rounded surface for the wires to go through without getting any cuts in the insulation. So here is the whole reason why I took this thing apart in the first place. It's the laser, the CD player assembly. Took it off of the lid right here. And, and I wanted to get at the, look at the ribbon cable to see if anything was loose here. And everything seems fine. I mean, I already took off the cover, covering this thing up just to show the inside. It's really neat how these things operate, but that's another video for another day. Anyway, this is the, the lens focus assembly. The optic uh, receiver is on the bottom right there the, the, that uh, receives the reflected image or the bits off of the CD. And the laser diode is right there. So that's the, and it's actually quite a substantial laser diode. You can just about see that it's kind of a long brass tube in there. So somewhat better quality than other laser diodes that I've seen. And of course, the whole reason why I'm interested in the laser diode is because apparently this thing didn't work. When I first had it on all together, I turned it on and I didn't see any light coming out of the lens. Even with, uh, with the camera to see if there was any infrared coming out of it, there was still nothing. So I figured the laser diode might be bad or the connections, but I really don't see anything obviously bad with the connection, so I'm going to try to test that laser diode. Okay, now that I got that laser diode problem sorted out, maybe now I can finish up the teardown. This is the, this is basically the front of it. I know I didn't show it in the beginning, but that's what it looked like before and it had a nice plate on top. This thing was on top in the CD player, right in the middle. But anyway, put that aside. And it's all falling on the floor because I got no room to put it on the table. Some half decent speakers in here. And I'm gonna take out this board right here. This is the vacuum fluorescent display located in the bottom of the thing and ooh, look at that. It's got the nice red plastic covering on it. Got a whole bunch of cool stuff. Dot matrix characters, five by seven pixels each. And a IR receiver for the remote control. And a microprocessor on the back. And that's about it. There's there's this board right here for all the, the buttons in the front and one little board on top here. That's just has a light pipe and a, that's just the switch. And also there's a blue LED in there that turns on when you push this button. And back in 2005, if you had any kind of electronic equipment with a blue LED in it, you were pimping. So that's it for the teardown. 
I was originally going to make all this one video, but I spent so much time trying to find out if that laser diode was busted, I decided to split it up into two videos. So I'll put the link into the other video and you can go check that out. But you can see I got parts all over the place and even on the floor. So that's it. Please thumb up this video and I'll see you later. Bye.